again back to barbecuing. Today on the menu, chili. We're doing it Texas style, no beans, nothing like that. It's just gonna basically be meat, some vegetables, some chili. Get it going. Here we go. First thing we're gonna need, we're gonna do about two and a half pounds of a chuck roast. We're gonna cube it up to an about one inch cubes. Uh, I like my chili when you get a spoonful of it. I don't want a giant chunk of meat like nice little cubes, you can fit on a spoon. It'll all break down, it'll all kind of be a thing, but you're still gonna get chunks in it, so it'll be nice to have like a, a bite-sized piece here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut this up into about, like I said, one inch cubes. All right, so now that we've got all the meat chopped up into one inch cubes. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little olive, uh, avocado oil into the uh, Dutch oven here. So we'll get that done right now. We'll just kind of coat the bottom nicely with it. And then we're just gonna add it all in. We're gonna keep it stirred, get it nice and brown. Browning is the key. Uh, food, when you brown it, creates this thing called the Maillard reaction, which is basically what makes burnt food or cooked food taste good. Uh, burnt food obviously doesn't taste good, but uh, so the Maillard, Maillard reaction basically is, is the browning of food and, and it creates the great flavors that you want. So if you were to just put this in with all the other vegetables and everything else, it would steam and it wouldn't have a whole lot of flavor. So we'll get the meat in, we're gonna get it browned up, and then we're gonna pull it out and we'll throw in the rest of the uh, the rest of vegetables once that's done. We're getting nice browning already. And also at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper. So we'll add about two tablespoons of salt, about the same of pepper. You can use freshly ground, it's probably a little bit better, but I didn't wanna take the time and grind that much black pepper, so. So, while we're waiting for this to do its thing, we'll talk about a few little things that are gonna go in this. One of the secret ingredients that's gonna be going in here is gonna be one of my beers. It's a rice stout is what I'm calling it. Uh, it was an imperial stout that was 11.5% that I aged in a rye whiskey barrel for over a year. It's been sitting since then for about another year. Most beers, you're not gonna wanna age, especially like a hoppy beer, like an IPA, something like that. You get up into the big Imperial Stouts or a barley wine or something like that, and they actually do well with, with you know conditioning. So we're gonna throw this in. It's gonna be a ton of flavor, a ton of depth, and uh, some amazing flavors. It's got like a, like a almost chewy, uh, syrupy, raisiny kind of flavor to it. You get a hint of the rye whiskey. Uh, it, it's, it's an amazing beer. <laughs> I absolutely love it. 11.5% uh, like I said, so you get about one. It's like a sipping beer, like something like a nice cognac maybe after dinner. Sit down and just kind of relax with it. So for that, that's gonna be going in a little bit later. But while we're making it, it's Wednesday. I'm missing the weekend. I found this from Coronado Brewery. It's called the uh, and I'm having a little issue here with the light. Mm -hmm. Here we go. It's called Weekend Vibes. So I was missing the weekend. I figured I'd be going for it. It's a 6.8% IPA from Coronado Brewing, which is one of my favorite local breweries in San Diego. I think they won Best Small Brewer of the Year, uh, Brewery of the Year a few years ago. Uh, they have a, at the brewery, a hibiscus IPA that is absolutely amazing. Uh, can't find it in cans, but this one is actually really good. This has a Citra, Simcoe, and uh, Mosaic hops in it. It's a nice, straightforward California or San Diego IPA. And uh, so this is what I'll be cooking with or drinking while I'm cooking with it. <laughs> and uh, so we'll keep going from here. I moved the meat over to another burner for a minute. One of the things that's gonna be going in this is gonna be a roasted poblano. Uh, we are gonna char it over a live fire, so we'll start that now. You just wanna put it on like a medium low on the burner, just throw it right on the grate right there. You're gonna get this nice char out of it. It's gonna get blistered, it's gonna get black. We'll throw it in a Ziploc bag, kind of let it steam for a little bit, and that'll help peel off the skin. And then from there, we'll chop it up and throw it in the chili as well. So now this is about right where you want it. Something looking kind of like that, nice and blistered, got it burnt everywhere, or crusty everywhere. We're gonna throw this in a Ziploc bag, like so, and then we're just gonna close it and let it steam in its own heat. It'll carry it over and that'll release the skin from, from the pepper. So we're just gonna set this off to the side for right now, somewhere over there. The meat is starting to finally get to the point where it's, it's browning up nicely. So we'll move it back over here. Mm. As you can see, it's got like a nice 
doneness to it, <laughs> we'll call it. So we'll throw that there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this out. We're gonna pull the meat out and then we'll start cooking the vegetables and all the stuff and the chilies and the peppers and everything that are in the juices from this meat. So let's get started on that. This recipe is gonna call for one large onion. All right, and like I said, we're just gonna dice this. Relatively fine. It's gonna mostly break down. I mean, we're gonna be cooking this thing for at least a couple hours. All right, get the whole thing. We're gonna need two bell peppers. I'm going with a red and a yellow. Um, you can use green, red, whatever you want, personal preference. So the way I personally like cutting a bell pepper is you basically just cut it in half and then you can just grab the seed pod right here, that's, you know, this thing, and just rip it out and then everything is already all cleaned up for you. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll just kind of give this a, a nice dice to it. We'll do the same thing with the uh, yellow bell here. The cool thing about doing it that way too is that you really don't lose much of the pepper. You take the stem off and, and everything just kind of goes with it. So uh, it's a nice way not to waste a lot. So another thing we're gonna use is four tomatoes. Uh, any tomato works, you can use aroma. These are vine ripe. Anything you can find at the store that's in season that is fresh. Uh, heirloom tomatoes would be amazing in this as well. Uh, so we're just gonna do the same thing, just do a little rough chop on these. These will break down a lot easier than all the other stuff, so you, you don't have to be too worried about the size of these. Like with the, uh, with the bell peppers and stuff, like I said, you want, you want it like kind of a finer chop. But with, with these, it, it doesn't really matter too much. All right, tomatoes are in. Uh, onions in, bell peppers are in. The other meat that we're gonna be using this is a, a beef Mexican chorizo. Uh, they have the Spanish chorizo, which is like kind of like a hard, you know, almost like a charcuterie type chorizo, or it goes in paella, stuff like that. This is more of like a soft chorizo, so it's, it's gonna uh, break apart and just create a, a ton of flavor in this. So what we'll do is we'll just chop this in half. We kind of scooted the uh, vegetables off to the side a little bit, and we're just gonna dump it in over here so it can get nice and browned up and, and melt in to do its thing. And we'll just kind of try and break that up a little bit as well. Okay, for the actual peppers, what we're gonna use, we're gonna be using jalapeno habanero. Uh, Habanero, super hot, ton of heat. Jalapeno, flavor, a little hot, not too bad. This one, you might wanna wear gloves when you're cutting it up. I risk it, just try not to touch my eyes, you know. Uh, they're just gonna add flavor, a little bit of heat. This chili's not gonna be super hot. It's not like, I love a ton of heat, the rest of my family doesn't. So I have to kinda cook to them, so otherwise I'm the only one eating it. So basically what's gonna happen here is, like I said, it's not a lot of heat, but we're gonna throw them in, we'll chop them up. This one especially, you're gonna wanna get nice and chopped up, the habanero. Uh, you don't want any big chunks of that coming through. Uh, otherwise, nobody's gonna trust you again and they'll never eat your food. So we'll get these chopped up and thrown in, all right? The other thing you can do too, if you want less heat, is you can take the seeds and the, and the, the little white part that's in here, this little white, you know, thing, whatever this is, the little veins, you can take those out. Those carry a ton of the heat in the peppers. So if you don't want it quite as hot, you're more than welcome to take out, take out the seeds in that. But like I said, for, for this recipe, one habanero isn't gonna, you know, make it to where you can't eat it. All right, so that looks pretty good. We got, we got it nice and diced. That's gonna go in. I'm gonna do the same thing with the jalapeno. Probably not gonna dice this quite as fine. All right, 
and that should be about good for the jalapeno. Do the same thing, we'll toss this in. This is starting to bubble and boil really quite a bit at this point. So what we do is we'll turn the heat down just a little bit, maybe to about medium for now. We'll stir, get all that chorizo incorporated in. Get these vegetables broken down a little bit. The smells coming off this are already amazing. We haven't even added any of the spices yet. So keep letting this go for just a minute. So for the spices, we're gonna do three tablespoons of chili powder. Whatever your favorite chili powder is. We're gonna do a tablespoon of chipotle powder. A tablespoon red chili flakes. Two tablespoons of ground cumin. This adds a great earthy flavor. Um, you don't wanna go overboard with it because it is a really strong spice, but two tablespoons in this is gonna be about perfect. One tablespoon of oregano, all right? All right, so this has been simmering around for about 10, 15 minutes now. Uh, I wanted to mention one more thing. While you're letting this simmer, you're gonna wanna let it simmer with the lid off. If you leave the lid on, it's just gonna basically turn into a soup and nothing will condense. It won't turn out you know, how you want it. It won't turn into a chili, it'll be more of a soup. So leave the lid off, let it go for another couple hours and uh, we'll come back. Last thing to go in, totally forgot about this. We roasted that poblano pepper, all right? So we're gonna take this now and we're just gonna shred off all the skin. It just kind of peels off, I don't know if you can kind of see here. It all just kind of comes off. Yeah, somewhere in there. <laughs> all right, so we'll take all the skin off of this. Now the worst thing you can do is to run it under water to try and get all this off. The, the charred skin, well, you don't want all of it, pieces of it, uh, are gonna add a ton of flavor. That's where, that, I mean, that was the whole point of doing this was to get this. So you wanna get most of the skin off that you can. Any little pieces that are left over aren't gonna hurt anything. They're actually gonna make it better. So we'll do the same thing. We'll take this out. We'll take the seeds out of this. All right. And then we'll just slice this into, we'll just dice this up nice and fine. Give that a little stir and you're going to want to keep an eye on this you're going to want to keep it stir you know constantly stirring it throughout the uh the cook time maybe every 15 minutes or so you don't want anything to burn on the bottom so a, a nice thick cast iron dutch oven like this is nice because it helps helps with against you know prevent against burning stuff like that um, but if you were to say forget about it and something did burn on the bottom the last thing you want to do is to go scrape that crusty stuff off the bottom leave it there just kind of stir over the top of it and uh, you get the burnt stuff off the bottom it's going to make your chili taste burnt so you don't want that just leave it on the bottom deal with it once you're done with it uh, we'll just keep stirring this let it go like I said we got about another I don't know, two hours left on this and I'll see you then all right so here we are it's been about a couple hours now um, the chili's thickened up it's looking starting to look amazing the smells coming off of it are incredible so we've got one last secret ingredient all right and this is what helps make this and that is tortilla chips so it sounds weird, I know, I get it. But if you take a handful of tortilla chips, take a handful of tortilla chips and you just crumble them up and crush them up, throw them all in here. What that does is it helps thicken it up while also giving it a little bit of flavor from the tortilla chip. But the, uh, the, the cornstarch that's in the tortilla is basically just acts as cornstarch. And so it'll help thicken this up and make it a really nice, rich, thick chili. Um, and like I said, you get, you get a little bit of flavor from the tortilla chips, which it, I really enjoy. Uh, it, it adds a great flavor to it. So we'll mix this up. 
At this point, we're gonna let it cook for about another 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll be ready to go. We'll cut open the bread bowl, we'll get some garnishes for it, we're gonna do a little sour cream, some cilantro, maybe some chives. We'll get that all on top. So in about 15 minutes, we'll be back and we'll get this thing ready to go. Chili is finally done. It's nice and thick. I mean, look, look at this. It's gonna stick to your spoon. It's gonna be amazing. So what we're gonna do now, get this out of the way. And we'll bring in all our garnish. All right. So for the bread bowl, we got a nice loaf of sourdough here. It's kind of a big one, but you know, man size. So what you're gonna do is you're basically just gonna cut a little circle. Around the top, kind of like carving a pumpkin, basically. So now you got your lid, and then you're just gonna go in and scoop out all the bread to make the bowl. So you get like a nice, Get like a nice little cavity in here. Let's see, looks looks pretty good. All right. You can also save that. You can chop that up, put it in the in the chili if you want. You could also make it for like croutons. Chop it up, throw it in the oven, make croutons for like a salad if you're gonna have that. Um, so now what we're gonna do? All right. We're gonna take the chili. We're just gonna throw it in the bowl here. Get it nice and stirred up. We're gonna load this up. All right. How does that look? Looks awesome, huh? All right. So now, with our sides, our accoutrement, or whatever you wanna call it, we're gonna throw a little sour cream dollop on here. We're gonna throw some fresh chives. A couple things of cilantro. And some fresh grated sharp cheddar. So, kind of buried the chili in that, but there we have it. The uh, chili made with a rye stout, uh, some chuck steak, bunch of chili peppers, some tomatoes all kinds of awesomeness. I can't wait to dig into this thing. Let's give it a shot. All right, here we go. Mm. I think it's just so blended together and, and melted. Uh, the sour cream adds like a nice coolness to it. You get all the fresh herbs on top with the cheese. Couldn't ask for anything more. So we're gonna call that a day. Again, weekend vibes are on. Cheers. Thanks for showing up. Subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down if not. Thank you very much. You guys have a good day.